One of the things that I work on is something I call integrative thinking. And I like to illustrate it with the Lego movie. Now, the Lego movie is, of course, a cinematic, spectacular success. Uh, it was a sleeper hit, ended up doing $468 million worldwide box office, more than anybody uh, e expected. It was awesome for the Lego brand. It was around that time that Lego became the number one uh, toy company in, in revenues in, in the world, surpassing Hasbro and, and Mattel. But the Lego movie only was the success it was because of the thinking style that went into it from Jörn Vig Nudstorp, uh, at, at that point the CEO of Lego, because he had two conflicting things to worry about. On one hand was the Lego brand. If you can have a movie, especially one called The Lego Movie, uh, if it did damage to the brand, if it mocked the brand, if it deprecated the brand in any way, it would be a disaster. Some, you know, it would have been better to have never done a movie than to have that happen. But he knew from previous experience that if you did movies internally, because they had done a, a full length uh, feature that nobody had seen that went direct to DVD, it would be you know, it just wouldn't be entertaining and boring and wouldn't reach a wide audience. What you needed was Hollywood talent who knew how to write and direct a, a movie, could distribute it and get it the wide appeal. However, the only Hollywood talent that would want to work on a corporate movie would be crummy talent because they'd worry about that corporation in the end having final cut and saying, oh, no, you can't say that, you can't say that, you can't say that. And so, so you either had to risk the brand by giving final editorial control to Hollywood talent in order to get great Hollywood talent or forgo Hollywood talent and try to make a, a, a Hollywood type movie uh, internally. That was the either or choice. And frankly, most CEOs in that position would have said, hey, Life's tough, you have to make these hard choices. Uh, but he didn't, right? He said, can I do these two things simultaneously? Protect the Lego brand and get Hollywood talent. And so what he did, which was very controversial inter internally when he, when he did it, is he went to Warner Brothers and gave them full final editorial control. But rather than just saying, Okay, now, Hollywood, you do what you're, you're going to do. He made a requirement of, that, uh, of, of giving them editorial final control that they spend time with Lego fans. And what he believed is if these Hollywood folks, even if they may have a, a kind of a subversive streak, anti-corporate, whatever, they couldn't hate Lego if they knew what Lego meant to all of these, uh, all of these Lego users, Lego, Lego uh, uh, fans. And so what came out of that was a movie that ended up being highly rever reverential to, uh, to Lego. In fact, there's a couple of really kind of cool things about it that came out of their interactions. Uh, there's a scene between Emmett, right, the, the lead character, and Batman, uh, who flies in in a, in a black plane, and Emmett says, can I make one in orange? Uh, and Batman sort of, uh, sort of harshly replies, I only work in black or sometimes very, very dark gray. And that was a joke. They put in that because of the conversations they had with, uh, with uh, Jörn Vignitzdorf, uh, where he talked to them about, or told them the story about when he took over and was, was turning around Lego. He had chopped the product line. He cut out a color called old gray, which is a very, very dark uh, uh, gray color, exactly what Batman said. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, he, uh, and he had a firestorm of protest because the Lego fans uh, uh, who, who were really serious about building used old gray, this very, very dark gray, uh, not, not dark gray, which was a, not quite as dark a gray. <laughs> they needed this very, very dark gray to make shadows on their, on their castles and buildings uh, and the like. So uh, uh, it, he 
he got into a firestorm of, of, of protest from them. He told them that story, and then they put it in as a, as a joke uh, in, in the a movie. And the other thing he, they found out is that you must never, ever, ever glue Lego bricks into uh, place because you need to build and rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. And so the evil uh, a villain in the picture sprayed people with glue, uh, that was that was the bad thing he and he did. So what ended up happening is that uh, Lord and Miller, the writer directors, not only respected the Lego brand, they were absolutely reverential about it. And that's one of the things that made it a great movie. Not just a good movie, a great movie, because the writer director like infused it with so much love and and respect and and sort of the the kind of inside uh, uh, story. So if I generalize from that and say, what did Jernvig Nudstorp do? He did something that I've come to call integrative thinking. So when faced with an either or tension, a very serious either or uh, attention, integrative thinkers constructively f- uh, face that. And instead of choosing one at the expense of, of the other or vice versa, they come up with a creative resolution of the tension that contains elements of each. And that is the art of integrative thinking that, that anybody can do, uh, but they have, to, they have to have this view that I can get beyond what everybody is telling me is an either or choice, and they will be the most successful leaders.